everyone. How you guys doing? Uh, hold on a second. Delivery guy is here. So, hi. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was funny. So, the delivery guy came because we just got our dishwasher. So, life. That's what it is when you guys do life. How are you guys doing? How was your Thanksgiving or Thanksgiving or thanks feeding or thanks the dog is alive? You know, all this stuff. Thank you so much. So, what are you guys struggling with this week? What surprises did your dog offer when you guys had those visitors coming in? So, you're welcome to message in the comments. Here you go. We have already people who know how to do that. Hi there, how are you guys? So how about you tell me where you're from and your name, and if you want, you want to give StreamYard permission to post your name. So, um, any questions you guys have? You type it in the comments. It looks like this. I'm typing it right now with all the spell checks. <laughs> and you press enter and it goes into the chat. So, What are you guys' questions? If you don't have any questions, I come up with some things that came into my attention this week. Let's go through my comments a little bit. Something that would be interested. Let me see if I have something that's interesting. Yeah, well, jumping on people um, is something that I see very, very common. And um, one thing that I see also is the very dangerous advice that comes in with that. And I think we should be very careful because when dogs are jumping on people, they are not dominant. They don't want to take over your life. They don't want to take over your family and, um, you know, <laughs> dominate you or, you know, <laughs> test your sexuality. What, what usually happens is it is a ritual. It is a ritual that starts very young with puppies when they jump on their parents to pay respect. And so they try to lick the face. Um, and that's where, where it stems. So jumping up on the face is a ritual that puppies do for their parents. Now, it is, it is um, let's say, inherited behavior because that's what dogs usually do. And if you gain respect from your parents, then you'll likely be healthier than other dogs who are not in compliance. 
However, when the people, when the dogs ra raise themselves with the parents, they get the information they need. So there's a feedback. Once the puppy is old enough, then the parent can avoid that situation by using avoidance signals, turning head, walking away, you know. They don't turn their back, point that. When we get the puppies, puppies will jump up because naturally it's what they try to do because they learned it from their parents. So this attachment way of communicating is what the dogs try to continue as you become the new attachment. Now, you can let it happen because it's funny if the puppy jumps on you, but if that puppy later on is gonna weigh about 120 pounds, 200 pounds, 250 pounds, that is a serious problem, especially if the dog is taller than you when he jumps up on you, you know, a great day. <laughs> um, or, you know, a great Pyrenees, or a Cane Corso, or a Bull Mastiff, you know, all these things become an issue. So it's nothing wrong with your dog showing that, but you have the right to express yourself and show how you feel about it, because it's really not about punishing your dog for doing that because it's nothing wrong with your dog doing that from your dog's perspective. What is wrong from your perspective is you don't want to get hurt. Otherwise you wouldn't have a problem, right? Or not getting dirty. So we want to come in from a right angle. So what you want to look for if a dog is jumping on you is to show him that jumping is not what you want. Now, how can you send that message without being violent or unpleasant, let's call it this way. I'm going to show you, I, I hope I can show you a video. My internet is really, really bad today. So I'm going to try, really try to pull a short video up with a nice puppy that I worked with a couple of um, weeks ago. And he was really very intense. So, yeah, I think it's a Boston Terrier puppy. Please forgive me if my internet is slow. No, too slow. No, it's not gonna work. Anyway, I'm gonna share the link in the comments. So what you will see in the comments would be a puppy jumping on me with intentions to bite. So he is a biter jumper. He jumps up to bite, even though the behavior is natural that dog went to the next level so we want to address that by teaching first the puppy an alternative behavior so um, dog shows behavior for either to gain more or to avoid things and we're coming from that from that perspective we offer the dog first an alternative that is as good as the one he chooses that we don't like and then we're gonna shift that as a primary behavior that we appreciate so we're coming in from appreciation because all the dog wants is to gain more on occasion number one. Occasion number two, the dog does this because he wants to avoid it. And you're like, wait a minute, he wants to avoid it and he jumps on me? He just needs to walk away from it. Yeah, kind of, sort of, because dogs, in order for them to make things go away, they have three choices based on the genetics. Fight, freeze, or flight. He could walk away. He could get stuck and not being able to do either or. Or he can attack you and try to push you away and, and control you. So jumping on is basically a controlling behavior. The dog with that action wants to control an event and an outcome. You see, all of a sudden, we bring it from a puppy experience, jumping on our parents to gain control of their gratitude and food and everything. And at the same time, <coughs> jumping on could be a sexual act or it could be an avoidance or it could be a kill. So the action in, in itself is something that's a functional behavior. Now it depends on the dog and the situation and the environmental factors, what exactly is going on in your dog's brain. So before you do any type of correction, punishment, adjustment, whatever you want to call it, you want to see what exactly has the dog 
what what the dog exactly the dog has a problem with because this is what you have to deal with because punishing a behavior without understanding the root of the behavior is just making things worse i know people who the dog is jumping on them they turn their back and the dog actually starts biting them why is that is jumping not good enough now he wants to eat him not really what happens is the dog gets frustrated because the dog jumps up because he wants something that he doesn't get the way he wants it and then you turn your dog back which is rude in dog you know social language and then you actually escalate you make an event which is easy to control you make it a dispute and from a dispute you can actually go in a fight okay you push your dog away the dog snaps your hand you punch it on the head you know all these things that go up and up and all of a sudden you end up in a yard and your dog is dead so we don't want to go down that road it doesn't really help the dog so what we want to do instead is start teaching the dog a behavior that we want him to do starting by recognizing when the behavior starts what what are the environmental factors that makes the trigger the dog to that behavior because he's not always jumping right well if you're not there he doesn't jump so you see all of a sudden it has to do with you or it has to do with people coming into your home no matter who's coming in your home the dog is jumping on so it's not really a particular person it's about people coming into your home so we start breaking it down in individual pieces dog is jumping on people when they come to their home new people or people he knows all the people good so when does it start when the door knocks the dog is like oh my god is it time to jump on people where are the people let the people come in let the jump on people because that's what they love i jump on them they push me back i jump even more and then we have a super game a greeting game we call it jump the greeting game and now all of a sudden you see you're in a vicious circle how do we stop that circle one option is to teach the dog to not get so aroused when the door knocks so we desensitize the door to start with because that's where the event starts so you have a start <coughs> of the event you have the event itself and you have the end of the event and so you have a climax that goes up with a trigger it goes further up when you see the second trigger third triggers will make contact and then all of a sudden we get bored about it and then it's gonna go back in your bed and lay down how can we make that shorter and not even so high because now you have a time excitement diagram how long does it take for your dog to go up how up is he going and how fast is he look coming down again to come back to the regular state of mind so you see all of a sudden it's kind of complex and i see people just punching pushing spray button the dog you shock shake your hands and shock colors and prong colors step on the leash kick your dog step on his toes kicking on his chest oh man and it's all it takes first of all to teach your dog something alternative so step number one desensitizing the first trigger the second event when does your dog once you desensitize the first trigger the door knocking what's going to happen next well you going to the door and opening the door voila now you are opening the can of worms right there when do you open actually the door is when the dog is in the best state of mind because remember every time you have this escalation your dog needs to come down from that trigger and the faster he comes down the faster you will do your next step so you see all of a sudden you are part of that event if your dog complies to what you ask him to do then you will comply what your dog expects you to do because at the end the dog wants to meet a person and at the end what you want is the dog not to jump on the people so you see all of a sudden we have to work on the starting part first and i know it's a longer route but you want to solve this problem once and forever you don't want to kind of push it down and then come somewhere else we want to teach the dog that coming up and sitting is what we expect the dog to do so what you come in is knock at the wall just like that the dog starts barking you know what he always does and then you ask your dog to go to his bed and lay down and wait for it the dog forgets about what you just told him ask him again go lay down to your bed good you give him a treat of bone let him come down then you go to the door your dog gets up he's like oh i knew you're gonna go to the door and i know there's somebody out there and like how about you go back to your bed and lay down because i will not open the door until you sit on the floor so your dog lays down let him make a round let him lay down he gets another treat for that thank you for doing that now i'm gonna turn back to the door 
The reason why you go to the door is because the dock remains on the spot. Right? Remember, it's the long route, but it's a safe route. We're going to teach the dog. The reason why you go to the door is because the dog is active part of you opening the door. He is in control. The dog wants to control, right? He is in control how he gets you to the door. But he remains on his on his bed or his safe spot. So as you work your way up there to the door, you open the door. Nobody's there. You call your dog up. You ask him to sit. He gets a treat. You send him back to his bed. Now you start creating a routine coming up. Sitting, getting a reward, going back to the bed. Now that package, we have to then expand to a more complex state. Because now we're going to, right? Your dog has to be right on his bed. Thank you for sitting there. You go to the door, open the door, close the door, ask your dog to come, ask your dog to sit. He gets a treat. He's going back to his bed. So what we do now is we create a ritual. What do we do when the door knocks? We come, we sit, we get rewarded, we go back to our bed. Okay? That's what we do because that's what we do always, right? Now, your partner comes home for work. Honey, remember what we discussed? Remember you're coming in the door, the dog comes up, you ask him to sit, you give him a treat. Thank you. Just a gentle reminder, my partner, right? You put a ziplock back outside of the door so your partner remembers that it's kind of the door procedure. And the dog knocks. Honey, you know, you have to wait a little bit, right? Thank you. You call your dog over, ask your dog to sit. You go to the door, open the door. Oh, your dog moved? Well, close the door again. As simple as that. It's his fault that the door closed because he moved. If that is not working for you well, you have to work on the sit and stay. On the spot, right? So otherwise, usually it works. But if it doesn't work, work first on sit and stay, and then start working on that on the door. Now, your dog has a problem with your husband because your husband or your partner doesn't really comply to your rules. I know. Then you have to go a little bit earlier. I want you to go outside the door, close the door, knock at the door, open the door. The dog comes up to you, and you know what to do. You ask him to sit. He gets a treat. He's going back to his bed. Nice dog. And another treat on that. So your dog has to learn the ritual what to do with the door when you come in. Because if he does it with you and he can jump up on you, and he cannot jump up on people. The dog doesn't make any sense of that because why would he not jump on people? He can jump on you. So you want to make that absolute rule, no jumping at all. Not on me, not on my partner, not on my kids, no one. Jumping is not appreciated. But sitting is appreciated. And I know your dog is a jerk and he doesn't do what you're telling him to do. And he always being that luck because he's stubborn, this breed, you know, his size, whatever you call it. And he still jumps on you because he just cannot resist. Because he's just thinking cute, right? Every time he comes up, he gets something what he wants. I would like you to just put your hands in front of your, of your chest and just turn your head every time your dog jumps on you. And the reason why I want you to put your chest front so he doesn't hurt you, you know, your breast, your hair, your shirt, you know, your hands are kind of safe about that. Worst case scenario, you can still, you know, do kind of a move to avoid that so he doesn't hurt you. But at some point, I would like you... Not to push, not to kick, not to step on the leash. All I would like you to do to look away from your dog until he goes back on his four feet, then turn his head towards you, thank you, and give him a treat. Now, watch this. And I know some of you are like, what? You just rewarded the dog for jumping? No, I didn't. I would reward the dog for jumping if I would push him away from myself because that would be a reward because interaction is what the dog wants. And I don't give him interactions. I'm giving him avoidance. Right, but if he makes the right choice of sitting, that I will reward. So actually, even if the dog jumped, his next decision was to sit, that I reward. However, what we want not to create is a pattern, right? I come up, I jump on you, you'll be upset, and then I sit, I get a treat. That's what I do. I come up, I jump, I sit, okay? So that I would like you to pay attention. Good, good question. What if one dog sets all the other dogs off? Well, then you separate that dog and work with that dog in particular first, get him up to speed, and then add the second dog to the equation that you know he's the calmest one. Hi, Joe. <laughs> yeah, that's a good stuff, right? Especially with big dogs. <clears throat> now, remember, 
you cannot reward the immediate action, but you have the right to give feedback to your dog for whatever happens right that moment. You have the right to tell your dog and your dog has the right to learn about it and hear it. So you cannot talk, don't say no, because sometimes what you do is basically engaging with your dog and that's not what you want. So remember, your dog does something you don't like, you have to give him that feedback, I don't like it. And you have to be quick, right? Now the next step is you want to treat your dog and you want to give him a treat because he's awesome, perfect, and your dog is smart enough and because your motion with your treats because your dog is thinking 10 times faster than you. Then you have to be a little bit more proactive because if your dog jumps, your hand can reject. So if your dog goes up with you and you want to give him a treat and your dog jumps up on you, your hand is just twisting away. Remember, looking away, your hand can look away too. So that signal is avoidance signal. International dog language, call it whatever, like international dog sign language. That means I don't like it. That means I don't like it. Everything turning sideways means I don't like it. So the dog gets that memo that because of his action, that hand and eye access, and your dog is like, oh, shit. Good. Thank you. Now that you see your dog will have that pattern, <clears throat> you're going to help your dog. You're not going to reward him for coming up, jumping, sitting, and getting rewarded. You're going to ask him something in exchange, in between that action and your reward. Because you don't want your dog to be rewarded for what he's thinking is right, but what you ask him to do. So here's what's going to happen. Your dog recognizes that jumping up doesn't work, sitting works, but he wants to jump first. You're going to get stuck with that system because he will always jump first and then sitting, and you don't want that. So what you have to do is not rewarding him at all. You ask him to do something else instead. Then he's like, oh, I jumped on you. Now I sit. Now I deserve my treat. And you're like, sure, okay. How about you lay down? And your dog is like, what? Lay down. Oh, no, I want to jump. And you're like, no, nope. how about you sit? lay down? Thank you. Now you get a treat. Now your dog has got the treat, not because he did what he wanted, it's because he did what he asked him to do. And all of a sudden, you recognize your dog is not getting what he wants always. There's nothing wrong with wanting something, right? But sometimes dogs take things the wrong way and they think they can always get what they want, which is not working because in nature, you cannot just have a bunny jumping into your mouth because you want it. You have to work for it. Now, I'm not a big fan of your dog has always to work for things, but I do believe your dog needs to know that some things is not possible to get. And especially the way they wanted to get. Because sometimes it works for them, but it doesn't work for you. And therefore, you have to accept that message, right? So let's, let's recap a little bit. And welcome to answer any questions if you guys have as well. <clears throat> so your dog comes up. He jumps on you. What do we do? What? What do we do if your dog comes up and jumps on you? Mm, give you a hint. Yes, you cross your hands and you, what did you do next? Yes, at the same time, crossing hands. No, you're not getting my hands. The, the nine axis and I deny axis too. What do you do when your dog sits down? Yep, what do you do when your dog sits down? You said the word good and he can get the treat, but when he's not getting the treat, if he what? If he jumps up, you have the right to deny access. Thank you. I know you remembered it. Here you go. You get the reward. Now, don't stop right there. Do the repetition, 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 because your dog has episodic memory. You know the difference between episodic memory and logic? Let me explain to you for those who don't know my explanation. So let me explain. In my back pockets, I have two of those. I have my wallet and my phone. Again, in my back pockets, I have my phone and my wallet. What do you think is in my back pocket right now as we speak? Hmm? Any, any answers here? Any 
Again, in my back pocket, I usually have my wallet and my phone. What is in my back pocket right now? Sharon! <laughs> okay, logic. Sharon says nothing. Anybody else has something to say? Do I have a wallet? Not your phone, right? Very smart, Vanessa, not my phone. So that's logic, right? So you guys say, is logic, obviously, he's shaking his phone, telling me it's not my phone, right? And of course, he's telling he has his wallet, but actually, I don't have my wallet with me. Actually, I do have my wallet with me. You guys are so lucky, but you know what? That's logic. Dog has an episodic memory. He doesn't know what's in the back pocket. So if you ask him what's in the back pocket, I don't know. What's a back pocket? Phone, what is it? Now, to compare, if I would have back pocket my treats, and every time I show up, I grab in the back pocket and give my dog a treat, my dog will remember that episode, me moving my hands in the back pocket and him getting a treat, and he will remember that. So if I ask him the question, what will gonna happen if I put my hands in my back pocket, but dog is the trick. Is this logic? No, it's not logic. It's memory. He remembers my action. So if over the years you always you ask your dog to jump on you or you reward the dog for jumping on you, don't, don't expect your dog for all of a sudden to change his mind because you explain to him, because his body has a memory that you can adjust the race just like that, because it worked. So the body has a pleasant memory of jumping on you and you try to convince him another memory that's supposed to be better than that. Like how would that work? So sometimes you have to go through a transition period where you have to tolerate the jumping without being upset and frustrated. Still be consistent and stubborn as your dog for not you getting what you need. You're not jumping on me, you don't get my attention or you get is my avoidance. And I promise you, your dog will comply faster than with punishment. Because with punishment, your dog doesn't change his mind about wanting to jump. He's just afraid of it. Is that what you want? And I know millions of people, what they do is they step on the dog's back toes. Because somebody told them it's a smart idea to do. Some of them told them to squeeze the dog's legs, to grab the legs and squeeze them or hold them so the dog gets upset about it. If he doesn't bite your face off, of course, he will jump off. And then you, that's how you do it. Or some people say, oh, you know what? You're going to get a shake again and you scribble it and you toss it to the dog and whatever you want to do with it. And you think that's going to address the issue. I don't think so. It's going to happen event when you start chasing the bottle or something or the spray bottle. Water bottle? What are you thinking? You have to put vinegar in it, like acidity to like 30%. Give me a break. Okay, now those are methods that are so outdated that not even those who invented them remember them because they recognize how stupid it is. Anyway, let's go back to our stuff. We want to be a good example. I know many people says, well, blah, 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 you never showed it. I don't have a dog to show it because my dogs don't jump on me because I addressed it the first day it happened. So how about you try it yourself? How about you prove me wrong if you do exactly as I tell you to do and you're like, you know what, it doesn't work. Your shit doesn't work. But I want, you, I want that on record. I want you to record what you're doing and send it to me or send it to us or post it here so we can see what's happening here. We're going to point it out. Did you see your dog's front legs? Did you see your dog was about to and you kind of already reached out for the treat and basically your dog had the intentions to jump and you didn't pay attention because your dog wanted to jump and you didn't see it and you're rewarded for it. So you have to be very, you have to be very aware of how your dog functions. So what I would like you to do when you do those exercises, I would like to observe your dog's habits. Before he jumps, he puts his ears back and his head down. Before he jumps, he's gonna go a little bit step backwards and then a step forward. I would like to look at everything that you see. Okay, Sean has a question. I have a question. If the dog continues to bark nonstop when the door goes, ignoring and getting them to sit, they still bark. Yes, they sit. Start with one dog at a time. The sensitizer one dog. 
and focus who is the one who starts. Usually the one who starts is the oldest, not the smartest one, the scariest one, because, oh my God, there's somebody at the door who wants to eat us alive. Kill him, kill him before he kills us. And it triggers everybody. So what you want to do is you want to calm that dog down. First of all, sometimes you have to remove him from the equation, keep him busy. I, at one point, I had a dog. He was exactly the same. You're awarded. He wasn't a big dog. He was a medium stock dog. But he had an obsession with food. He loved food. So what I did is, oh, you, dude, you, have it, you have an option. You go crazy about the door or you miss the sausage. Exactly. That's what I thought. He is the oldest and just doesn't stop barking. Because A, he doesn't see what's happening. B, <laughs> like all those rusted gray cells are not really existing anymore. He doesn't really think the whole process through. He actually forgot what's happening around the door. So that would be a hard one. You have to work a little bit hard on that. What I would like you to do is if he likes hot dogs, let him chew on a hot dog. And while he's chewing on a hot dog, start desensitizing the sound of it. Use anything that works for you that he barks, start working on that. <laughs> he wants to bark and eat the sauce at the same time. However, for not barking, he gets rewarded. This is where you're coming in. Then the other thing you want to do is measure the time the dog needs to bark after the sound. So how long does it take in seconds or milliseconds after he hears that sound? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so your dog seems likely to be um, sensitive to sounds. We would like to start with your dog to make sounds and give him a treat. Because what happens to your dog, he's triggered by the sound itself, like everything that has a peak, even if that is a flea fart. So what we'd like to do is make that an announcement of food instead of announcement of fear. Okay, so that's your homework. Homework number one, a sensitize the trigger number one, any sound, and then work your way up, okay? Good, and stop saying that word. <laughs> ah, well, here you go. You actually are the cause of the problem. So you tell your dog, hey, yeah. <laughs> and your dog is like, oh my God, oh my God, we're gonna get killed. So how about you come up with a new word? Cookies. How about that? And your dog <laughs> will know exactly what's gonna happen. Cookies! <laughs> and people come over bringing cookies. I think you're gonna win with that one. So you may not win the war, but you win that battle and start working your way up with these things, okay? I know it was funny thing. So, to sum up again, first of all, desensitize the initial triggers and watch yourself what you're doing and what you're saying when things come up, okay? So don't forget yourself. Actually, I would really record the whole thing. Set up your phone, get a freaking tripod, don't spend $50 like I did. Okay, I spent $70. For that tripod, it has a holding device, okay, like that, and you can hold it yourself. So you can create a selfie of yourself, video filming yourself, and I want to see what you see on that screen, right? And from there, what you're going to do next is record yourself and find out when exactly that happens. Even if you have to upload it on YouTube and slow it down to... 0.25% of the actual speed for you to really recognize who barks first. Sometimes it starts with and then the other dog barks. So you have to want to capture that, okay? So, oh, stay away from me, wow. Okay, so that's what I suggest, suggest you guys to do. So if you guys have any other questions, post in the comments, uh, and we'll get back on you on that. And I would love to see a couple of videos before and after, because I know you're going to make it. Be conscious of your body language. Don't come in with your dog response, Ugh. Your dog knows exactly why you do that. It's because you know you're frustrated and he wants you to get frustrated because if you're frustrated, you do things faster. He knows he has written you already. He's just, you know, dogs have episodic memory, you know exactly how your gesture looks like. 
if it's like, hi, oh my God, the dog's even bark again, such an embarrassment. And dogs read your battle language. So how about you being cool about it? What's up, guys? Yeah, okay, how about you come over here? Thanks for coming. How about you lay down? Good. And what about the door? Don't worry about the door. Lay down, be good. Thank you. Fine. So show appreciation, especially you guys who have guardian breeds. The guardian breeds have to make a bark. It has to get out. You cannot say no to that. So let them bark once. Thank you for barking. Come here, lay down. Good job. Thank you. Appreciate them for the freaking job they were bred to do for thousands of years. So you're not going around that. Okay, accept one bark. But when does it come? Who is triggering? I know from people who called, called the dogs being aggressive. And then I was watching the videos. Like, your dog is not doing anything. He's just doing what everybody tells him to do because somebody has to do it if everybody else were being killed. And then the strongest one steps up and kills everyone because somebody else told him to do that. So you want to make sure who is the instigator because sometimes the one who actually creates the event is not really the one who actually did it. It's somebody else who told him to do it. Oh, you're going to get killed. Are you killing them or should I kind of go crazy and die about it? You know, all these things. Good. I know that was funny. Anyway. I really appreciate your feed, guys' feedback. Um, it's really boring if I have to talk about things and you just kind of watch. I see people, how many people are on it. <clears throat> but if you guys don't say anything, I feel kind of weird about it because either you don't hear me or you don't understand what I'm talking about, or you're just making your coffee and just totally ignore me or something like that. But if you give me feedback, I can answer your questions. You know, I know what's going on. Um, and of course you can share. No, you know what? Don't share it. Don't, you know, you don't want the other people to know about that. Why would you like, take a break? Why would your dog be perfect and the other ones too? Keep it for yourself. Don't share it. <laughs> okay, so I hope you guys have a pleasant, um, Thanksgiving. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is going to open that box that just came in. My dog flipped out, of course, because he's never been, have seen a truck coming up so close. Um, and of course, these big people with the boxes in front of their head. And so, yeah, I think I'm going to open. To be honest, it says real pull on it, but for some reason, it's too tall to be a dishwasher. Okay, what was that? Thank you for the idea of working with nature of the video. Of course, guys, come on. You cannot go against nature. You have to take nature on your side, right? Oh, come on. My dogs are not so bright. You just <laughs> that was knocked and treated for several minutes, but the treats are away and they are all around to the door and have been barking like idiots. Okay, that's a good thing. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't, don't, don't leave because let's watch that. My dogs are not bright. Just knocked and treated for several minutes, but the treats are away and they are all run back to the door because you rewarded them for wanting to go back to the door. You just delayed them with the treats. How about you keep them occupied by asking several things to do? Keep the mind occupied here and not occupied to the door. And you guys who know me, you know, I will just tell you, hey, how about you start with your look exercise? Look, come, sit, good job, high five, thank you, lay down, good job, wait, don't move, take a deep breath, <sighs> yep, okay, good, thank you. Now you got your treat. Oh, you're going to get up? Look, come back here. Well, I want to go to the door. I know, come over here. Lay down, good job. I know it's very tempting to go to the door. I know your body wants, cannot resist. It's kind of like the thing to go to the door. How about you stay loud a little bit? Thank you. Keep focus. Don't lose your focus. Thank you. Here's your treat. So hold on. Stretch the time between your dog waiting. You can move your hands. Okay, some dogs, side hounds, for example, if you're static, they're like, yeah, whatever, and they walk away. If you're moving, a dog is like stays focused because movement attracts them. So you can play with those games a little bit. Keep them occupied. Teach them to stay longer occupied. If you're struggling with that exercise for your dog going back to the door and cannot lose focus, yes. 
I am available for online session in January. Actually, I'm available all the time. Actually, that's what I do 100%. I am an online behaviorist and I coach people to learn about their dogs and be their own behaviorist. And I know people tell you, ah, oh, no way, you know, you know, you need to be the scientist. You know, we have the PhD to be your dog's behaviorist. No, you don't. You know, you just need to be a parent. You know, parenting, you know, children, having kids, you know, kids want things, you have to tell them not to. You know, imagine you have a non-verbal child, age five, and you have to explain that you have to go to work, okay? That's what I do. I help you become your dog's best parent, slash behaviorist, slash trainer, slash an awesome best friend to your dog. Because working with your dog is simple. You just have to understand where they're coming from. And it's just common sense. Unfortunately, we don't have animal common sense anymore because what we have is pets. Thank you, Saffron. I watched a lot of your videos and they've been really helpful in learning just that. How to be a dog parent. You know what? Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. I mean, that's my purpose. And I know people tell me like, I, I, it's not about me here. I know I'm kind of making fun of things. You know, I like to be public, but I use that to educate each individual of you to step into your parenting power and don't give it up. You don't give up your parenting power to a trainer who comes to your house, shows you how good he is. I am good too. I come to your house and take over your dog and be like, holy shit, he's good. It's not my point. Okay. I'm not good. At, if I would be doing that, I would not be good because I will disempower you. I will take away your power. I will take away your dog in a minute. And what's in for you? What's in for your dog? All you will get is like, wow, that was cool. And then I walk away with it. I walk out the door and you have nothing from that. And how do you feel about that? Because I wouldn't feel good. I would be kind of like cool about it, but then at the end, you fail. Because your dog says, you know what? He was awesome, and you, my parents, suck on that. I'm going to do whatever he wants, and I don't want to do what you want because you don't do what he does. And that's not the point. So doing online training, that's what I really like on that. And I started doing online training in 2007. People told me, you're an idiot. You cannot train dogs online. You have to be present. You have to see what he's doing. I know how dogs bark. I know how dogs jump on. I know how dogs kill themselves. I don't need to be there. I just need to understand why they do that, and all I have to do is ask questions, okay? When is he doing that? Who is there? Who else is there? What is usually happening? What time is it happening? Was it before dinner, after dinner? What was the previous, what are, you, what are you feeding your dog? What was his last vaccination? What was his last vet visit? Does your dog have allergies? They're all questions about getting a picture about these environmental factors that are invisible. I will not see them being in your house, because I didn't see six o'clock, I see 12 o'clock. I don't never see six o'clock because I will not be there. So how would I know? So the idea of a trainer has to be there to see it is kind of BS, right? And what I need is your perspective, how you feel about it, because that's important to me, how you feel about it. And I will have the translation between how you feel about this and how your dog feels about it and how your child feels about it, and how your partner feels about it, and how your other dog feels about it, because all it matters how the individual in your family feel about each other, because it's about relationships. And once, um, and once we teach the dogs how to build relationships, and especially dogs who come from rescue, basically dogs who are being abused and coming from, who knows how where they're coming from, and the struggle of building those relationships, he has no clue how to approach you the proper way. And if you come in the wrong way, all you create is a default aggressive behavior. Food, vaccinations, bad parenting, bad timing, bad skills, all these things make the dog fail. And, you know, from my perspective, where I'm coming from, dogs are perfect. You know, dogs are more reliable than cars. Okay, hit me on that. Why? Because you know exactly what your dog is gonna do. You knock at the freaking door, that dog will freaking bark. That's what he does. 
Is your car starting in the morning with minus 50 degrees? You will not bark because your battery will fail. But that dog will bark. So my dog or your dog is more consistent than a freaking car. Yet you're driving 120 miles an hour with your car and you expect the brakes to work. Where is this coming from? Right? So parenting is about creating that reliability and that relationship. So you can modify your dog's reliability to things that you want him to do and they appreciate it. So your dog can be reliable doing things that he is better at that functions functions for you perfect. Yes, dogs are perfect. Thank you. So as simple as that. It doesn't matter what breed is. I know people says, oh, you haven't seen my bulldog. Oh, yes, I have. Not your particular bulldog. But you know what? I've seen about 200, 300 bulldogs, different types of bulldogs, bitey ones, not bitey ones, bully ones, assholes. But you know what? It's a breed trait. Bullies have to be consistent and working. Why do you, why, why do you think the British officers have the bully breed as a mascot? Why some old, you know, um, military groups had a bulldog because they are not stopping once they have something in their mind because they were bred to do that. Don't stop, keep going. Okay, imagine a bulldog being obedient. Wow, I, I worked with the bulldog one once, um, was in 2009, I think. He was not a good dog, so he had a sister from a different le leader, and um, he was bullying her. But I recognize he was very smart. He was a performer. Tech. He wanted to perform. He wanted to be perfect. Unfortunately, his parents were not so in tune because they were busy doing their business, you know, multi-million dollar homes, golf and finance. And, you know, you know, so kids in school and schooling and don't get me started. Anyway, um, that was really a nice job. And I have a video, maybe I can share it for you guys at some point, that I asked him a question to show me how to get out of the door. And he observed me every time that when I go outside, the first thing I'm gonna go, I'm gonna push that button, the gate will open, and we're gonna go for a walk. Um, Shafran, we are worried about the Pyrenees breed traits coming out negatively in the city. We are living in Ottawa, but the breed has many redeemed qualities we want. We want. Your video on Pyrenees helped me understand. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate it. I, have, I work with National Great Pyrenees Rescue a lot. Um, and if you stay tuned at some point or you follow me, you're going to see that um, I have a Q&A later on with National Great Pyrenees Rescue, which I have to. Um, have to attend uh, good questions. Um, but again, back to the bully. He was super smart. So he remembered. So I would do one step at a time. He was asking me to go outside. I opened the door. I said, what else? He went forward, looked back to me, and he looked back in the direction he wants me to go. I did that. I went in the direction he wants me to go. But then I ended up in a dead end because this, this, the walkway ended there was a step. And I was like, well, what do you want me to do now? He came back. He showed me how to go up the steps. I said, I don't know what you're talking about. He came back again, went back again to the steps. And then he was, I, I did that. He, he was funny about that. Then he went to the door button and he looked at the button. He looked at me and I was like, what do you want me to do? And he like, <laughs> he looked at the button like, and I pushed the button. Basically, he walked me through the process. And that was a very interesting moment because I learned how dogs want things to happen. They think step by step. Step number one, step number two. So if he teaches me how to teach him, that's all I have to do is to reply to his teachings and take that teaching as consideration and show him exactly step by step. I had to understand the steps. So what I talked to you today was the steps. What do you do with those steps? It doesn't really matter. You can teach your dog to, to ring the bell or something. You have to understand the steps. Break it down in each individual piece that he can easily remember. Don't make it too complex, remember? Don't use your logic, okay? Use your memory. 
and teach your dog to remember each piece of that task or that project you want it to do. Reward each individual task, put it together in a job description, and then reward the job description. Be consistent and repetition again and again. You'll see your dog will get it. And you know what? You get that persistence that he already barked for so far. You get that as obedience. You're good. All of yours, all of ours are rescues. The oldest is easiest. Our youngest two are thing one and thing two. <laughs> they are barkers. They feed from each other. I need to work with them individually. Yes, work with them individually. Leaf blowers, woof, woof. Yeah, been there, done it. So yeah, understand what they're struggling with. If you are, if you understand what they're struggling with, show them empathy. Empathy is a magic word that has a magic power. Thank you. I, you know what? I totally agree with that blower pisses me off. Okay. How about we put the blower down and how about we smell that blower? So set up the blower, put treats around that. Let them smell it. I do this with vacuum cleaners. So they're sensitizing those little things. And you know, little dogs have issues. Big dogs have issues. All dogs have Alzheimer's. They forget things, you know. Okay. So I need to close because I have to get ready for the next session. So thank you so much, guys, for talking. Thank you so much for your comments. I really liked it. You guys had a little bit late start. I know coffee time and all these things. And it's my fault because I should announce it earlier. But, you know, I don't know what what come up on Saturday morning. You know, just like now, I started something else to talk, and then we ended up talking about, you know, barking and doors and bulldogs and Pyrenees. Um, yeah, and I, I'm, I want I want you guys to succeed with your dog. So if you need help, um, you're welcome to message me. We can set up an appointment. It's freaking affordable, but give me a break, okay? Um, we do a functional behavior assessment. We find out why your dog is doing what he does. Then we do likely follow-up sessions. If we see at the first session that he has serious things and more complex, I have training packages. I call them mentorships, basically, where I mentor you through the process to become your dog's behaviors and trainer. We talk about nutrition. We talk about behaviors. We talk about everything that you need to know. So everybody will say, you know what? He's a whisperer, not me, you, because you can do that. I could, you could, everybody can. It's just, it's just a matter of understanding the concept. Once you understand the concept, it's easy. So thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your weekend. And remember, your dog doesn't have logic. He has memory. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. And um, talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye. Yeah, this is the point where I have to click that button here, right? <laughs>